El poder está en ti. Comparte una noche positiva y llena de motivación con Cristian y Anastasia. Empodérate y sé tu mejor versión. Todos los lunes a las 8 de la noche tienes una cita con nosotros en 2 en Línea TV. La nueva radio digital online. Los lunes son una nueva oportunidad al éxito y la felicidad. Somos 2 en Línea, tu canal digital. Oh, hello everyone. How are you doing today? I'm not in the studio. However, I had to connect tonight and share with you so many things going on. I haven't seen you in a while. So thank you so much for joining and uh, being here with me tonight. I hope everyone's summer was amazing. And I just came back yesterday from an amazing event. We were celebrating 10 years of our company and we had a rank achievement and recognition and so on. So many people, so many strong personalities, leaders, so new product, obviously. The energy was amazing. Like, honestly, you should all go to one of these events. The energy is unbelievable. I have so much to share with you. So, so much. Uh, unfortunately, we have a short segment. So today I would like to concentrate on the correlation between the luck and success. Uh, what is luck? Does it exist? Um, how can I get one <laughs> if I can? Um, the reason that I decided to talk about it, uh, because I hear people all the time saying, oh, um, I wish I, I'd be like this person, or they see somebody on stage and say, oh, I wish I would be like that person. I wish I have this or I have that. And somehow there always comes back to what they have. They're sitting there, they're looking at the people that succeeded and they say, yeah, I wish I had that. So, you know, they always believe that luck has something to do with success. And um, it can be nothing further <laughs> than truth because we cannot even comprehend that luck has nothing, nothing to do with your success. So today I want to give maybe more details on why I think that way. And um, to start with, let's think about the lottery winners. You know, you play here in, in Ontario and Canada, we have uh, 649, Super 7. Uh, in the US, they had huge bills and like hundreds of millions of dollars um, you can win on a lottery and people do and they're so excited and then I checked statistics and that was scary because after winning hundreds of millions or tens of millions of dollars and why one would think that would be enough for them to live comfortably until the end of their lives and giving up for their kids or their families or their favorite charities or their pets god knows what uh, sometimes later than when they win that lottery, they declare bankruptcy. You heard me right. They declare bankruptcy. Or some of them going back to what they had before. Yet, they won. You, you, it doesn't make any sense. How could you spend so much money in such a short period of time? But they do. And yet then, in the same time, you hear the story about the person who didn't have anything when they were growing up. They had zero, nothing, nada. They had absolutely nothing. And they achieved great success. So wh why that happening? Why is that somebody declaring back bankruptcy and another person is succeeding? It actually comes back to your mindset and it going back to managing all, all the things in your life and the way you see everything. Um, I know that uh, 
there was a I, I believe uh, some time ago uh, there was some sort of um, story going on if you right now share all the funds within USA or North America you take all the money and you will just distribute equally to everyone exactly amount of money that everyone has the same like everyone will have ten thousand dollars for example or whatever amount it is or hundred thousand dollars by the end of the year the people that were rich before they will get all their money back and the people that were poor before they would stay poor and there's always question i'm trying to see my phone here as well uh if you have any questions you can you can always uh write it down so i always wonder why is that why the the, the that statistics unfortunately shows us that uh the poor people would stay poor and the rich people would continue being rich um it is a mindset but also um remember that success it demands things from you oh i apologize for that um the uh success usually demands from you to have growth to change yourself the personal growth is a must the mindset outside of the box is a must any change to acquire something is a must um, being constantly outside of your comfort zone being uncomfortable all the time is a must in order to grow you have to have um anything that would you would have to sacrifice the time the discipline everything is a must it's a part of your personal growth i'm trying to see who is here hello everyone who has just joined i am on the computer and on the phone so that's why i'm looking both ways and um, when somebody somebody say i wish i had that or i wish um, i was like that person on stage or any celebrity or anyone that they almost idolize the question actually should be are you willing to go through things that they have gone through in order to succeed, succeed in order to achieve what they have achieved? Because it's easy to say, I want to have it, but what does it take? There's some stories that you don't wish for your worst enemy, what these people gone through and they stayed strong and they achieved tremendous success and i applaud to them because i wouldn't think it's humanly possible to go through all that so when you say i want that and you say yeah, yeah yeah i wish to also to go through everything so the question should be what steps should i take in order to achieve it what steps should be one after another in order for you to to get there because if you decide to change yourself if you decide to invest in yourself and your personal growth and follow the people that have succeeded you will understand that in several years after following that truth you will build your own luck that's correct the luck is buildable it's yours it's not something superficial i'm sure you heard about the overnight success oh yes look at this he was nobody before or she was nobody before and now this song is everywhere it's number one for months but guess what these people worked extremely extremely hard in order to achieve that overnight success they worked all their lives in order to achieve it they worked tirelessly through so many mistakes the people that are usually on stage are saying the reason i'm standing here because and i i'm successful it means i heard the word no much more than you have much many many more times than you have 
That's why I'm here. Because rejection is part of success. Rejection is part of this uncomfortable zone. It's part of so many um, uh, successful stories. But some of us, we don't want to have that rejection. Somebody will say, no, you're doing the wrong business and that's it, we're closing down. So that's not the way for success. Success usually demands from you to be uncomfortable and rejection, you just embrace it saying, yes, please. Um, I know uh, quite a few extremely successful people. And I also know some people that have not achieved anything in their lives. And uh, there's an interesting difference when they're talking about obstacles and excuses. And when it comes to excuses and um, the way they talk about the people that haven't succeeded, usually say, oh, because of this politician, I hate him, I cannot stand him, and that's what the reason, or I absolutely love this politician, and they will talk about him or her. Guys, let, let's think about it. The politician, doesn't matter if it's your MP, if it's your prime minister, if it's your president, you are making a choice once in two, four, six years, and you choose the appropriate politician either to represent you in, in the parliament or if you want it to be a president, you made your choice. You, whether your candidate wins or not, that's a different story, but you're doing everything in your power and you go and you vote for the person that you want. So once the president, the MP, the uh, new you know, prime minister, or who doesn't matter who else has been chosen, why don't you concentrate on yourself? Oh, this person, this politician embarrasses me. How about maybe taking the opportunity to look at yourself and saying, how would I not embarrass myself? What can I do in order not to embarrass myself? How about, oh, I love this president with this prime minister. How about, that's great, but how about, do you love yourself? Do you really truly love yourself? Because this question, sometimes people get so surprised. They say, well, what do you mean? Do you love myself? Of course I love myself. But deep down say, do you really love yourself? Because in order to, succeed you have to believe into yourself and in order to believe you really have to appreciate yourself so the politician is a random person somewhere out there and if you cannot change anything right now right this minute about the country's politics or economy or something is going on that you're not happy everything will collapse guys we can work on ourselves in the meantime. And if you're really into politics, maybe in eight to 10 years, you can be the next president if you work hard enough, if you put in, invest in your personal growth, if that's so important for you. But always start with yourself. And if you don't do that, that's fine because there will be one more quality person on this earth. Just think about it. It will be one more person and then you can create this rippling effect because you'll be surrounded with people that will be like-minded and you can have you can create more good regardless if it's your business if it's your work if it's your personal life you can grow within so when you have all this energy when you have energy to spend and say um i love i hate i don't know about uh anyone here oh hello amanda hello natalia i i i don't know this politician but i hate him i i know this politician i love him all these feelings and energy spend on yourself and your family and trust me there will be more good if you're gonna do it rather than you're gonna spend on the somebody else that at this very moment you cannot change so the people that haven't achieved much in, in their life they usually blame someone else, like there's a political, uh, political situation, the economy is, everything is bad, that's why I haven't succeeded. It's everyone else except for me. 
But when I talk to successful people, they're saying uh, the, the one of the examples will be, yes, right now the, uh, the trade with China is not that in the greatest between USA and uh, China. However, we have overcome this obstacle and everything will be in order with a slight delay. That's the difference. You have the situation, you deal with it, and you still get the positive result because you know one way or another, you still have your products delivered to where you want them to be. You can sit and complain about it, but you would not gonna change anything about it. So that's what the difference between successful people and uh, not successful. Successful people will overcome the obstacles. They will learn how to do it um, fast and easy. Uh, it won't, it will look easy. It won't be easy, but they will just take it as a given and how to work with the situation. So there's so much to learn from people who have succeeded rather than who hasn't. We can also learn from people who hasn't, haven't succeeded. Uh, we can learn what not to do. And uh, there's one story I wanna share with you, but I think we're gonna right now go for a quick break. We have to uh, listen to our wonderful sponsors and they have a lot to say. And we'll be right back after these messages and I will share more stories with you. Hi, my name is Vicky Chapari. I'm a realtor. I have the chance to meet families every day and help them. Uh, for me, it's really important to know my client and know the expectation and the needs. And building a I guess not. A friend. Uh, buying, selling, or even renting is one of the most important financial decisions and even emotional. So it's so important to know each other and to trust each other. And we start working together. And to my That's client, I have a wonderful group of professionals that I work with as a lawyer, mortgage broker, home staging, painters, and I love to provide that information to my clients as well. Hola, soy Nico, tengo cinco años. Soy astronauta, caminante y a la vez viajero. Me encanta viajar, pero esta vez mi nave se ha descompuesto. Hemos descubierto que la única forma de volver a la Tierra es recolectando pequeñas gotas de gelatina, aunque acá ellos las llaman células. Necesito millones para poder llegar a la Tierra. Hola, yo soy Tadora A. Dr. Stacy. I'm Dr. Stacy Cooper. I'm the author of Heal Your Health, and I have a special offer for you. I also utilize the Quantum Biofeedback Resonance Scan, which is a non-invasive tool to see how your body's functioning on the inside before signs and symptoms show up. To receive $50 off the scan, simply mention Rosemary Sanchez and the program El Blando and Tere Mojeres, Talking Between Women, and this way you will receive $50 off. And I guess we're back and we're on. Um, hello, everyone. We're back. And uh, now I'm going to turn off some of the sounds so there will be no external sounds interfering. So I want, before break, I wanted to share with you a story. And it was a very touching story that I heard um, and the convention. And it really relates a lot to what people say, what people think. Uh, there was a lady on stage, her name is Carrie, and uh, her story goes, uh, she's one of the uh, leaders in our organization, and in February, she had a terrible accident. Uh, she had those small candles uh, burning, and she just reached for something, and she set herself on fire. So um, it was terrible experience for her. She had a third degree burns and she was even five weeks in coma. I'm trying to make the, the story as short as possible. Um, but during this five weeks, she had her 
checks her income from our company coming on a regular basis. Every Monday, it will be deposited to her account, even though she was in coma. It will deposit, deposit, deposit. And there'll still be people saying, oh, she's lucky to be on stage and to have what she has. She's not lucky. She worked so hard in order to have that residual income. She worked very hard to build extremely strong team in order to get where she did. She worked so hard that when she was in coma, is unexpected because anything can happen to any of us. She was not financially struggling. And there was one last headache in her mind that she had to take care of uh, finances because she was sick. The checks were coming every week, were directly deposited to her account. She built it with her hands. She spent several years in the organization. I don't remember, is it four or five years to build that strong organization that was there when she needed it the most. That was not luck that she had finances. That was not luck that she was able to afford any treatment she wanted. That was her hard work. That were her dedication. That her everyday commitments. That was her discipline that built that luck in order for her to, to be able to relax and not to think about finances. I don't know how many um, companies would allow you to do that, to, to, to be sick with a full pay and everything. I'm not talking about corporate versus um, network marketing. I'm talking about specific person and the luck that has nothing to do with luck, her success, and the fact that she was able to achieve whatever she achieved and be comfortable just because she built it. And that's what I want you to, to think about it. So when you are, when you're serious, you, you do it not as a hobby, your business, you would be much more you would be much more successful and you would realize at that point when you're not just sitting and wishing you would realize that guys you know what the luck is here and building it by myself just picture this you know all the superheroes you there are so many movies like avengers the last one had every superhero, almost every superhero you can imagine. And imagine you have that uh, superhero suit or costume, like finest quality with all the gadgets and bells and whistles, whatnot. And you're gonna put it on yourself and you look phenomenal, like, wow. Would that costume make you a superhero? Like, honestly, from within. Would you be able to go and save the world just because that costume is on? No? I thought so. Because most of the people will say no. And the only people who would be able to say yes is because they worked their whole life to prepare for that. They trained, they were disciplined, they were committed in order to achieve. So now if they put the costume, but they don't really need the costume at this point. They don't need it. They can save it without it. So luck is artificial. There's no such a thing as just something like you build it yourself. When people see you serious, the people see that you're committed, the people see that you are doing it over and over again, that you are there, that you are not doing hobby today with something, tomorrow is another thing, and you cannot decide something, and uh, maybe this, maybe that. So they are like completely confused what you're doing. They don't know which company you're with. If you're in network marketing, I saw people, they're doing here, there, here, there. Uh, and at the end of the day, you don't understand what exactly are you doing. So if you're committed and you're doing something and you're serious about it, 
people will start treating you that way as well. People will start seeing you as a committed person. They will start seeing you as someone that would start to admire you and they will follow you. You know what? There's one, um, there's one quote that I, I took on um, green screen by Chris Rock and I absolutely loved it. He said, I would always end up broken down on the highway. When I stood there trying to flag someone down, nobody stopped. But when I pushed my own car, other drivers would get out and push with me. If you want help, help yourself. People like to see that. Isn't that amazing? When people see that you're doing something, when people see that you are building your uh, something, when you are building your dream, is it your business, is it your career or something, they're willing to do it with you if they see that you're serious. And obviously, at that time, when people start joining your organization, doesn't mean that you become lucky. It means you built your own luck. Just imagine yourself. If you're a business owner or you're a network marketer and you are, you, you have to be honest to yourself. You know what you do on a daily basis. And now imagine that your entire organization, everyone that you know in your organization, they're doing exactly the same thing. They do exactly what you do. They do exactly how many phone calls, emails, whatever activities you do, that's what you do. That's what they would do. How far do you think your organization would go? Some people are amazing. Say, oh my God, I would like to have 10, 20, 100, or 1,000 of me. We would just rock. And other people say, uh, well, I don't think we would go because, you know, today I was busy and then I wasn't sure about it and I didn't call anybody today or yesterday was something, my dog, I took it for a walk. Or the weekend we had a party and I didn't have time. Excuses, as you know. Or other people say, yeah, we would rock. Just think about yourself. When you do something, other people are willing to do it with you as well. And again, nothing, nothing to do with luck. So when you're dreaming about success, when you are, hold on, let me put it here. Uh, when you, want to be someone you don't wish for luck because luck it's not necessary to wish for you create your own you would understand that investing in yourself you will invest in yourself you will invest in your personal growth and you will expand your mindset when people talk about uh, they talk about education, like uh, in network marketing, you know, you study so hard and then you're out of the job. I want to be very clear here. Nobody's saying that education is bad. Because if people believe that education was bad, they would not send their kids to the best schools they could ever afford. Education is amazing, but you have to know how to use it. It expands your range, it expands your horizon. You have to know how to use your education not just for a paper, that's the difference. So when you invest in yourself for personal growth, this is, you're not doing it for a paper, just to show here to get a job. You're doing it for yourself. So you will be able to absorb much more information for that. You will go be more disciplined in order to succeed. Like think about uh, for a second about the gym. You decided to work out, you signed up for membership, and you even went to a gym. Okay, by going to the gym, can you achieve results? Can you really achieve results by just walking in? I wish, to be honest, I'll be just standing there and saying, hello, just going in, going out, and there are results. But it doesn't work that way. 
You have to get those dumbbells and do your weights. You have to do your step muster. And guess what? You do it until it burns. And only when it starts burning, you have to continue doing it because only that time it starts working. And you do it over and over and over again. And guess what? For three months, you're going there and you're going to not see any results. You're going to see results only after three months if you're doing everything correctly or more. You're not going to be overnight success from day one when you decide to join something. You're going to work on it for some time in order for you to become a professional in what you're doing. And then you're gonna create your luck and you're gonna be that successful person that you're dreaming of. So it's not what other people have, it's what you can make out of yourself. You have to embrace the uncomfortable zone. The uncomfortable zone, it is the only way to succeed. It is the only way for you to, be, to become someone. Because if your comfort zone was okay with you, everything would work out, you would be already successful within your comfort zone. So if you're not successful within your comfort zone, you have, you have to go outside. And again, it's not being lucky. You have to work on yourself and you'll create that luck. Guys, your luck is in your hands. So. The only thing you have to do is carpe diem. Just seize the day and you will succeed in you will succeed in anything that you would like to succeed. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye-bye. Mi nombre es Mariana Santos y soy consultora de migración y refugio aquí en Canadá. En mi compañía se llama Santos y Associates Immigration Inc. Hacemos toda clase de documentación sobre inmigración. Llevamos a cabo refugios, razones humanitarias, visas de estudio, de trabajo, de turismo. Acérquese, consúltenos a nuestra oficina. Estamos siempre dispuestos para usted. Los espero aquí en Santos y Asociados, en la esquina de 